Other riders have been putting in some good performances, but there's no way, no matter who they were, they can match the performances of these two up front. Those YZR Yamahas, 120 kilos and 140 plus horsepower out of half a litre on carburetors and obviously unsuper or turbocharged. Johnny Osborne, about 125 horsepower, 130 but much heavier bike for Michael Dowson. And then we come to super bikes. Wayne Clark, in fact, has got a problem with his. The Ducati 750 Robert Holden, twin cylinder only, running extremely well. Great credit to both Bob Brown, who's built it in Holden in the way that he rides it. And then mainly Suzuki super bikes. Buckmaster seen briefly there. And can number two, Kevin McGee, if he's done well on the track, and he's done well in the thinking and the way that he's tried to set up the bike. The one thing he really has botched in the last few weekends is the starts. Yes, it's uh, tricky to get these 500s off the line, uh, perhaps because of their narrow power band. It's something that requires a, a lot of skill, and it's uh, something that we're going to see more of in Europe because uh, clutch starts are going to be used for the Grand Prix next year, replacing the push starts, which have been traditional. Donny Osborne, just there, left of picture. McElnay, Buckmaster being passed by McGee. They warm up everything, brains into gear, and then you see from the air, glorious shot of the back straight at Calder. Now as we watch Michael Dowson, we have to remember that his motorcycle has been down the road once today in the first swan round, and uh, Donny Osborne's Honda has been crashed twice. He fell in the first swan round, and then in, uh, in another race. So Osborne's confidence has probably been knocked they move up to the line for the start of this final 15 lap heat of this one insurance series the ninth year of the series in Australia one only once by uh, uh, more than once, rather, by one rider, and that, of course, is Wayne Gardner, who's won it three times. Mal Campbell, Dave Hiscock, Graham Crosby, Greg Pretty, and Jeff Sale have each won it one each. If Rob McElnay wins it this year, he'll be the first European ever to win the Swan Insurance Series in its history. And uh, I think I'm right, there's only one non-Australian, Graham Crosby, has actually won it in, in the past. Very much so, yes. Armstrong foreground, ex Robbie Phyllis Suzuki Superbike, very quick. Rob McElnay, fifth in this year's World Championship. Armstrong again, next to Dowson. Ready for a start in the final 15 laps of the Swan Insurance Series 1986, Calder Park Raceway. The ninth Swan Insurance Series breaks away as they go into the final heat, and it's Dowson on the production bike, Donny Osborne on the V3 Honda, who's in the second place, probably temporarily when the Yamaha Grand Prix bikes wind up. Donny Osborne leads then, and then McGee Kevin McGee. Through. But Dowson up the inside, incredible late-breaking manoeuvre from Dowson there. Obviously feels he's got nothing to lose, the production races are over, and he's in third place as McGee leads. Dowson up into second, passing Osborne on the brakes. Rob McElnay's in fourth, as you can well see, looking for a way past Osborne now. Will Kevin McGee crack for it and really go for broke and see if he can beat McElnay? No stooging, no mucking around, leading from the front. We'll wait and see. Into third place, blasts McElnay, past Donny Osborne. So it's Marlborough Bikes 1, 2 and 3. Grand Prix production, then Grand Prix, then Honda 4th. Kevin McGee in the lead. That's where he's got to be if he's any chance at all of winning this one insurance series. Rod McElnay must finish worse than 4th place. Currently, he's there in 3rd position. It's Donny Osmond 4th, Buckmaster's 5th. An incredible first lap from Dowson to hold second, but now McElnay takes over the superior speed of the Grand Prix machine, telling down the straight. And they averaged 133 kilometres an hour for a standing lap of 64.8 seconds. Lap records, Freddie Merkel at 59.9, and that will be absolutely destroyed. And a better ride now from Simon Buckmaster up into fifth place, but this is Michael Dowson, number one in third, as McGee wheelies over the hill in the lead. Looking confident on a circuit he doesn't like very much. He says it's all stock corners, slow corners. I like something flowing fast, a Grand Prix type track. Only a second separates Kevin McGee from Rob McElnay. Oh, back wheel up off the deck there as he stands it on its nose under front braking. And uh, 
as we see McGee with a shake there. McElnane paid, could have paid him no finer compliment than when watching a replay of uh, one of the earlier races said he does ride well doesn't he he looks like Eddie yesterday about the fastest qualifying time was low 57s McGee perhaps breaking 56s he's already done a 57 one his first flying lap Kevin McGee, what a talent Peter Clifford, he's showing in his quick adaptation to this bike, but intelligent too, looking after the bike, really getting it on that fine line of having a go, getting it on the limit but not crashing. Yeah, beautiful riding, and Dowson still hard at it on the, on the production bike. 1.15 seconds separate Kevin McGee from Rob McElnay. And the production bike, which is having a wheels ridden off it by Dowson's 3.95 seconds behind this pair. And with these stop-go corners here, Rob McElnay has had a little bit of a problem with the carburation of his Yamaha. His doesn't seem to be working quite as well as McGee's. And when he wants to come through the corner and crack the power on, it's been hesitating slightly, so he's had to run through the mid-corner a little bit faster than he would wish. There you saw Donny Osborne third and uh, Simon Buckmaster but fourth, followed by Robert Holden on the Ducati in fifth position. Absolutely flying, big wind here, 57.5, their second flying lap as McElnay closes. He at the moment's lapping just a touch faster. Big brakes that are like a big elastic clamp on an aircraft carrier to stop a plane, pull the bikes down so quickly. And Kevin McGee's finding out the capability of the brakes and of the cornering the tyres the frame of this superb motorcycle. And that's where Rob McElnay is having a bit of a problem, getting his bike onto the straight at the speed he wants to. Dowson hanging on brilliantly in third place. 57.76. Oh. So this, each lap so far, slower. Kevin McGee, 57.1, the first flyer. 57.5, then 57.76. So I don't think he's in a hurry to show everything at the moment. And it comes down once more to a tactical battle. It appears that both these men have enjoyed having the other lead. Oh, look at McElmay through there. Absolutely flew through there. He's right down and onto back McGee under brakes. He says it's absolutely flat out in fifth. Pull one side of the bar, then the other. Use every inch of road and you can just get through there flat out. And steering it with knees on the tank too. It's such a physical business. So much glorious balance and bodywork involved. And every time McGee able to come out under the start and finish eye on a tighter line, squaring the corner off with a better carburation, Rob Mack compensating with a wider line. 150 kilometres an hour average for 57.6. Nine seconds separates these two back to Michael Dowson and then a further 3.3 seconds back to Donny Osborne in fourth position. Glorious placement out towards the white line. McGee was mono-wheeling. They looked as one for a moment there as they come screaming over the hill. And McGee through there. Boy, look at the blast past the helicopter that's hovering. And they test the skills of Roger Dundas in the ABC chopper. Very quick up the back straight. Get underneath him there. He has to wind up, take the long way round on the outside if he likes. McGee's calm at the handlebars, confident, looks back. 57.8 that lap. And that's daylight back to third position. Michael Dowson as he comes up now. And he's losing about a second and a half, no, two seconds a lap. 12.27 seconds. And then back to Donny Osborne, who's now 4.1 seconds behind Michael Dowson. And Osborne beginning to come under pressure from Buckmaster. Yes, indeed. First time, really, in the series. Tim McGee sees McElday there and says, boy, better get into it again. But uh, McElday does have a problem passing McGee because... He's not faster down the straight. He hasn't uh, yet shown the ability to hang in McGee's slipstream, so it would seem that an outbreaking manoeuvre at the end of the main straight is out of the question. He's going to have to find somewhere else to do it. Fastest official lap has been given to Rob McElroy, 57.11 seconds. And that's a 56.8. 
just done Kevin McGee. Oh, look at McGee lifting the back wheels off the deck. 152.3 kilometres now, suddenly, just like that. Three tenths of a second faster than the previous best lap. Back section of the circuit. End of straight, top left of picture. And then out and over the hill here. Up over the hill and mono wheeling. Desperately hanging on to the back brake, trying to keep it down in third gear. So what's your bet, Will? I mean, we've seen that Rob seems a little bit quicker through that right-left flip than McGee. Is this point the place on the circuit where Rob McKelney will try and pass McGee towards the close of the, to the race? Or will he try and go inside him here? I think Kevin McGee would be expecting it there, and he's going to have to be very assertive to pull it off there. And the way McGee's riding, he gives me the impression he's feeling very happy there. And, uh, and of course, the way McGee's getting the better drive out onto the start and finish line, it's not enough, perhaps, for Rob... And again, look at the rear wheel off the deck! 10 and 12 metres at a time! Goodness me! Kevin McGee, I just can't believe how relaxed the guy is, how quickly he comes to grips. It was only one year ago that he got his first ride on one of those old TZ750s. He dumped it here at Calder, wasn't the slightest bit phased, on a bike that in 1978 was regarded as an incredible weapon. And here, one year later, he's riding the bike that won the World Championship. And he's putting it on the line everywhere, Apexes are right, he's breaking it harder and harder, meeting by meeting. He's getting the power on pretty early. He's coming through some corners very fast and hard as Rob McElnay there tries a different tactic. Warren Willing, the ace tuner for the Kevin McGee bike, has pulled a couple of demon tweaks and one of them is that they found a set of brake pads that really worked. He'd used them yesterday once only, then put them in for this race this afternoon. And but certainly Kevin McGee is making good use of it. But while McGee was lifting the back wheel, I think that Rob McElnay was closing on him under the brakes there. And of course, if you can keep both wheels on the ground braking hard, you've got more rubber on the road. Indeed, new lap, did then. New lap record for Kevin McGee. And here goes McElnay, makes his move up the inside. Tries to outbreak McGee just where he thought he might do it. He was faster through the right and left, and there's a tail ender in the way. That's going to upset things. That's Jeff Paul. And McKelney goes inside, McGee goes inside, both of them put off line. McKelney has trouble getting out onto the straight, we know that. McGee has the better drive, McKelney comes wide, McGee tucks into the slipstream. Now let's see the braking at the end of the main straight, see if McGee comes out again or whether he stays there and consolidates. just don't know how fast they arrived down there. There's nowhere to go, Peter Clifford, at the end of that straight. There's what? About 15 metres of dirt before a solid wall. And has Rob McElnay made his move too soon? He's now giving McGee the chance to chase. And as the lead changes, so does the dice for fourth position. And Simon Buckmaster overtakes Donny Osborne. And Robert Holden's fifth. Michael Dawson, of course, is in third position. trying to make a break, trying to put some daylight between him and his arch rival. The official lap record has fallen to Kevin McGee with 56.92 seconds. Rob McElnay, 56.96, only four hundredths of a second less. And we do it in justice to Michael Dowson, who's third, Buckmaster's fourth, Donny Osmond's fifth, and Robert Holden's sixth. As they do low 57s again. They're averaging not much short of 100 miles an hour at more than 150 kilometres an hour, there's the three Yamahas, the three Marlborough team bikes and the lead one. This is Master where McElnay and seems to get away a little bit, but perhaps McGee's learning because this time McGee hangs right in his slipstream and it's, hit, it's McGee's turn to look at an outbreaking manoeuvre. This is lap 12. Crossed 11. Problem for Donny Osborne is now he gives way to Robert Holden on the Ducati. And is McElnay looking at a bit of deja vu here? He led at this point in the race at Oran Park, and McGee made that brilliant last lap manoeuvre. McGee's tucked down harder and tighter on the bike, and if anything, I think made ground down the straight. And then suddenly the limit again, and McGee's bike mono wheels at the front, i.e., standing on the front wheel. Punch up, hook right, late. 
because it's this left-hander that's the important one. Gun it up over here. McGee hangs back a touch. Mono wheeling again. And a new lap record for McGee once again. 56.8 seconds. He's just carving tenths of a second off the lap record, lap by lap. He took 1.2 seconds off Gardner's lap record at Oran Park last weekend. Laid that down to a sensational time. 112.1. This time a wider entry line, trying to make it up on the big drive through, and this could well be McGee's challenge down the end of the straight on this occasion because he certainly got through that corner better. McGee goes down the outside, McElnay takes a longer way around, and McGee's there earlier, close to him. Both riders lifting the backfield, but McGee gets his higher. And there's a rider down at the end of the straight, just caught a flip, someone there picking the bike up. now a lap and a half Buckmaster, Buckmaster is off well oh. the only time he got going against the local opposition on a similar bike he's dropped it bad luck for him hasn't been a good Swan Series campaign coming up here to lap Jim Judd South Aussie 500 There's Buckmaster on the fence Back to the leaders, Rob McElnay in the lead, behind him, Kevin McGee. Coming up to take the blue flag to indicate one lap to go, and it's still Rob McElnay in the lead. Still Kevin McGee looking for any way through. This is his last chance at the end of the main straight. Will he take it? No, he can't. Rob McElnay's got him hemmed in. But has Rob Mack gone in there too hard? No, he hasn't. A beautiful line from both men. McGee didn't look interested there, or perhaps he had nothing to produce. He certainly wasn't trying to get past McElnay, or as I say, wasn't in a position to get past him. Here, McElnay is going for it. He really is on song. And is making life very difficult for Kevin McGee as they go off up the back straight. And if it's it to be anywhere, it's got to be up here for Kevin McGee. McGee tries up the he's inside. Done it. No, he's done yes, it. He's done it, but has but he got a go wide? wide. No, no, he, he doesn't. Hung it. He's helped in. Go, Kevin McGee, go. One corner to go. A and corner and a drag race. Kevin McGee won the heat at Oran Park last year. Wayne Gardner beaten in two heats by Malcolm Campbell. And Kevin McGee lines up to do it again, and he's done it. And McElnay's conceded it as he came onto the main straight. He knew he didn't have the drive, and Rob McElnay conceded the win to Kevin McGee. And it was, to, I reckon, pretty close to a lap record there for Kevin McGee. But of course, the saving grace, as far as McElnay goes, is he did all that he had to do to take the Swan Insurance International Series. There really was no point in uh, a fairing banging exercise at the last corner, but a great ride from both men. McGee's last lap effort once more proving tremendous. And there goes Dowson sliding the big thousand Yamaha out, into, out of the last corner to take a well, very well deserved third place. And there it goes third place to Michael Dowson so Yamaha's one two three Kevin McGee I've done it for you fellas he's saying to the crowd half a second gap between first and second and I reckon the last lap for Kevin McGee here it is confirmation 56.57 for that man 56.57 for Kevin McGee a new lap record he's got it at Oran Park he's got it here at Calder Park and his race average speed was 149.4 kilometres an hour, taking 14 minutes, 26.77 seconds for 15 laps, with Michael Dowson on the production Yamaha 1000 third. So, Peter Clifford, let's review what Kevin McGee's done in three Swan Series rounds and what it might mean for him in 1987. Well, of course, he's won two races. That's the most important thing, and he's never put a foot wrong, really. The slides, the slips, yeah, they've been there, but uh, he's kept the bike upright. He's crossed the line every time. He's either been second or first. And he's got two lap records. He's got two lap records, and he's done it in front of Kel Carruthers. And the narrowest point situation in a six-race series so far in this, one in this one series was last year between Wayne Gardner and Malcolm Campbell. They finished six points ahead, apart from each other at the finish. That's exactly the margin in this one series between... Rob McElnay and Kevin McGee. McElnay finishes the series on 84 points. Kevin McGee finishes it on 78. Yes, a really perfect performance from both men.